All right, ladies and gentlemen, God bless you and welcome to Serving It Up. And I am your host, Joe Nathan. And I am grateful and, and I have a blessed honor to be with a young man, a gentleman who I've grown to know and love and cherish as a brother of my own. I thank God for him being with us today. And uh, we're going to go right into this show and it's going to be a serious day today here on Serving It Up. I hope you are ready for this night. It's going to be a glorious night. All right. And I just have a thought real quick. And that thought is, no matter what you might be dealing with in your life today, guess what? No one understands you like you. So if you handle it the way you would handle it, you might meet yourself on the right road. But if you look at everyone else and you see how you're going to deal with your situation is based off of how they would deal with it, guess what? You might embark upon a, a dangerous road to take because you need to understand you from the beginning. He, he wonderfully and marvelously made you in his sight. And guess what? He's expecting great things from you. And once again, I'm back to my guest. And my special guest tonight is none other than John McGlunn. And I praise God for him being here with us and taking out of his busy day to come down here to serving it up. God bless you, man. I thank God for you being here with us. Man, what a pleasure. You know, it, this is a pleasure to man, be on awesome. this, this, this platform. I appreciate you uh, giving me an opportunity to, first of all, hang out with you and yes, as well sir. as be able to share and, and, you know, change some lives. Together. All right, man. That's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to change some lives. That. Absolutely. Amen. But first of all, we want to get into who you truly are, man. And, uh, you know, I hear that and I've read and I've seen some of your, your information on not only on Facebook, on some Amazon. I've been to the website myself <laughs> and you are the CEO and uh, the founder of what? I'm a testimony clothing. I am a testimony, testimony clothing. clothing. I mean, just the name alone, <laughs> you know, it breaks down barriers. Yes, indeed it does. You know, I think for me, the name of the business applies to anyone. You yes. know, uh, the actual business is based on John 3.33. He that has received this testimony has set to his seal that God is true. So um, your testimony is stamped and approved by God. So, you know, when you think about it, everyone has gone through something that they can share with yes. someone else. Yes. And they can relate to their own testimony, whether Absolutely. it be something biblical, whether it be uh, something that's natural, uh, they can relate that it is a testimony to themselves because they've been through a test. That is exactly what that's you're saying. That's exactly it. And I think sometimes uh, when you look at individuals, not only do they have spiritual but earthly situations that yes. happen to them. So anything that you can apply that to and change another life with as far as your story, because I think a lot of times we don't get a chance to be invited Yes. to share our stories. Wow. And so the actual apparel line invites you to share your story because someone can say, why are you a testimony? Yes. Or what does that shirt mean to you? Or what does that apparel mean to you? And you can share your story and then they get a chance to share theirs too. Exactly. That's, that's like you're saying, hey, you know, I knocked on your door and you opened it. Guess what? I've got a message for you. Absolutely. You know, I mean, we see, we see Seventh Day Advantage. We see maybe... Uh, who are some of the other uh, ministries that are out there? Not, well, all of them. Well, yeah, at some yeah, point, yeah, they knock yeah. on doors. Absolutely, absolutely. But they actually don't wait for somebody to give them a reason why they should come in and share with them. They just sometimes bombard with a bunch of questions and a bunch of statements. But when you say, I am a testimony, and that individual opens up to you about their own testimony, Correct. they, I, I got you, man, loud absolutely, and clear. Absolutely. So let me ask you this. Why did you choose? And, and actually, why did you, why did you decide to choose this. Well, see, you know, I didn't decide. Yeah, okay, yeah. So this was a vision that was given to me based on some of the things that I actually went through uh -huh. in my own personal life. And I think you have to go through specific things to be able to share those things. Uh, you can't identify with a story unless that story has been applicable to you. Amen. So when you look at being a testimony, you have to go through a test. Yes. And you have to be able to share that test with others. Okay. Yeah. And so that's, okay, now, now let's get into the fashion a part of it. Now, how, how did you choose the fashion line? You know, in my life, you know, I'm around the, the I've been around the ministry for, you know, a mile of years. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, it's, you know, it's in the DNA. We'll but, get into that. You know, the thing is, is that we look at, for me, Yes. I remember there was never in a Christian apparel that I can identify with. Wow. Now, there's a lot of it that, that are around. Yeah. But there's never been a particular brand that you say, I want to wear that. Yes. So, to have an, a, an apparel line that people can identify with and say, you know what, I could see myself wearing that. Yes. Or no matter what the genre is, you know, race, color, creed, yeah. if you've gone through that, that 
actual I am a testimony fits you. It fits you. You know, so, you know, being in the and around the ministry for the period of time that I've been around it, I wanted to change that. You know, uh -huh. I wanted to be able to have something that everyone could have that yeah, identify with. Yeah. So let me ask you this. What is your favorite part about being a fashion designer? Well, you know what? I wouldn't use the word fashion designer. So what is it then? I would say fashion messenger. Ooh, I love <laughs> Fashion He's a fashion I like messenger, that. you know, and Ooh. I thought about that, you know, when I was the new, when you and I talked before, you know, I never wanted the message to get lost in the apparel. Ooh, I've I like always that. wanted the message to be out front, no matter what kind of design that I wanted to use or do. So it's like that metaphor, hide me behind the cross. Be believe me. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't want you to see me. You know, you got so many out there. They, they want to be seen. Right. You know, right. but you're right. actually saying, I want you to see this cross absolutely because this cross is my testimony yeah and then wow and man you, that's when awesome. you look, and then also when you look at uh, the initial message it just resonates yeah yeah <laughs> you know, so, yeah i mean it just comes off your, I you love know, it. your tongue very easily i I'm love it i love it man i'm oh i'm, I'm already <laughs> excited ladies and gentlemen i'm excited somebody stop me <laughs> yeah man let's get into this some more okay so my next question what were your inspirations uh, for the design, okay? Um, How did you create this inspiration? You know, wow, to be honest, going through the vision part, Yes. there was two things that I wanted to see. I wanted to see something that people can initially know that that's what it meant. Yes. You know, from a, you know, because you have, from a brand standpoint, uh -huh. people identify with specific things. Yes. But from a cross standpoint, I wanted to make sure that when you saw it, it meant something to you yes. in various, for various reasons. And once I got the, the, once I got it down pat, everything else just fell in place. Wow. Yeah. You know, so I look at when people see I am a testimony, there's no doubt they know who it is yeah, and, yeah. Who, and where it came from. And they also know that I, that is something that I can see myself being around or being a part of. Yeah. It's a movement. Yeah, it's a movement. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You know, when you when you when you talk about that, you know, you've seen Lord of the Rings, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, man, who hasn't? <laughs> <laughs> man, I, you know, it's like it's like when I when I vision myself putting on some apparel like that. Mm -hmm. And as I'm slipping my arms into this T-shirt that says I am a testimony, I see a soldier one who is strapping up and getting ready to go to war mm. because we're coming to a place, man. Yeah. I mean, can you can you imagine? If we were to not walk around with our Bibles under our arms and quote scriptures, but the Bible is actually bred in our spirit. Absolutely. And as we lace up on this, I am a testimony. I'm coming in here for one reason. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we got some radical people out there. And I believe Christ was radical, too. Oh, I, don't, yeah, I don't believe he was somebody <laughs> to mess with, man. Absolutely. absolutely. So that's how I see you. Honestly, that's what I kind of see. I see you like strapping up and getting ready to go to war, baby. I like that, man. Well, you know, I, I, that's interesting because one of my designs is prepare for battle. Ooh. And it's a soldier. I need that the, one, man. I need that yeah, one. I'm a the, warrior. With the, you know, with all of the gear <laughs> on. So, and, you know, it's interesting. One of the things that I thought about, what if you had to have something that identified you as a Christian? Wow. And it was called I Am a Testimony. Wow. So all the other perils that you look around with messages and things, what if there was a stamp of approval yes. and that was how you were recognized? And wow. that's one of the things that I looked at. How would I want to be recognized? I would, wow. rec I would want to be recognized as a testimony. Wow, that's yeah. awesome, man. That's awesome. Okay, so how did you select the material? That, that's got to be important, right? Oh, man, you know, that was, that's still a lesson in progress. You know, okay. I think because material is really not the main thing because yes. you can you can use a lot of different things that will feel good on you or not feel good on you so have you taken any surveys from some oh. said customers <laughs> that would say hey you know cotton makes me itch or i don't like oh, synthetic absolutely. or you know yeah absolutely i've made a lot of mistakes yeah 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 <laughs> you know, I, I got a, I got a lot of prints that's uh, still sitting on the side <laughs> because it just didn't work out right right but, uh, yeah you know yeah people have of course, different feels for what they, and that's no matter what they do. Exactly. You know, they already know what they like to wear. Yeah. And to me, as long as my message is attached to it, I can figure that part out. Copy you know? that. Yeah. So, Copy that. you know, those things really. That's good, man. That's good. Yeah. That's good. good. Okay. So, all right. What was it like working with others who were handling your vision? 
like any other parent. This is my baby. <laughs> you know, this is my and, baby. And it's still tough because I, I'm learning to allow others to work with me to help my baby. I walk. like that. You know, I like that. And I'm still, you know, and, I, and think about this. As a parent, you usually look for, you're hoping that you have someone that knows parenting. Yes. You know, so to help you, you know, give you pointers on raising your child or whatever it may be. So that has been one of the things for me. I've been learning how to adapt and work with others. Yeah. Or be a mentee. Yeah. You know, so that I can actually. But bring do you my game do up. that? Do you do that? I, I would visualize doing that on the sidelines so I wouldn't have to do it in public. Because you got some yeah. people, who, you know, leaders. Some leaders will do things in public versus doing things on the sideline. And, and it's like, you know, if, if I am being mentored by you, I want you to make sure that you help me craft my gift. Mm -hmm. And, and, and if, if you hired me for something, I need you to help me craft it, but I need you to sit back and watch how I do it first. <laughs> Does that make sense? It makes sense, but then at the same time, I, I, I like the way you put that. It's almost like saying, don't let the left hand know what the right hand is. Exactly, you know, exactly. In the background, you know, every great athlete or business person needs a mentor or coach. Everyone. Even, even in my speaking, I have a great mentor and coach uh, that helps me in the background yeah. to help me do what I'm doing now. Exactly. So when, it looks, uh, when you look at the apparel line, you don't necessarily get a chance to meet individuals that are doing what you're doing. So exactly. you have to seek out. So it takes some time to do so, but when you do, you stick with that individual. And exactly. I've learned to do that. All right. That sounds good, man. That's good. That's good. All right. All right. So now the next question is this. <laughs> are you ready? I'm ready. All right. I'm ready. Bring so how on. much travel time, marketing, and television <clears throat> are you able to fit into your schedule? Oh, man. Ooh, that's a great question. Yes. Yeah, because you... I've done my you, homework, you man. I've done my homework. <laughs> You've got to time manage. And it's, and it's difficult because even if that is not the main thing that you do, yes. you still have to manage it so that it produces what it's supposed to produce. And so that's tough because there are some other things that I like to do that I am doing. Yeah. And I have to infill, well, I guess I have to bring that in and implement it right into whatever, exactly. all the other things. So when I do like speaking, you know, I bring that along as far as my apparel line because it's part of what I do. Exactly. You know, uh, even when I go out to a vendor situation, I, I, that is what I, my purpose for going. So. Everything that I try and do, I try to bring that that along with me. Copy so that. That's the, really the only way you can, you know, uh, from a standpoint of being able wow. to make it ha work. Man, you got this going. Man, you got this <laughs> rolling. Cause here, man, I'm, I'm hitting you. I'm hitting. Not, not, this ain't my best. Now, this ain't my best. But I'm hitting you with some good okay, stuff. You, you gotta know? come with it, man. <laughs> <laughs> I've been prepared. All right. All right. So, so we've had a chance, ladies and gentlemen, to meet the CEO of I Am a Testimony Clothing Line. Amen. And uh, the gentleman has a great book. How many books have you written? I've written one and I'm in three. So I've, I've, been, I've written in three. This all year, right. He's year. written and three. And three is on the way. Well, no, it's all three this year. Already all done. three is coming out. So a total yeah. of four books. Yeah. yeah. And one is already bestseller yeah. at Amazon. Actually, one is that I wrote is a bestseller and the other two that I'm in are bestsellers as well. Wow. Yeah. So it's been a great year. All right. <laughs> all right. So you working it, man. Yeah, so you got it going on, right? I'm trying. So the atmosphere must be ready to give us back what you spoke. Mm. I'm, looking, I'm looking for some great things because of what you spoke. Right. Because you've released it in the atmosphere, man. And now I'm waiting for it to come back. And, and what I'm saying is this. The Bible says, whatever man shall sow, that shall he also reap. And I'm waiting to reap some of the goldness and the richness of what you put in those books, brother. I'm, I'm a mole it. man. I like to dig, <laughs> I'm, baby. I'm receiving it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is our first half. You have met Mr. John McGlunt, and I encourage you, don't turn that dial. I want you to stay with us on Serving It Up, and I am your host, Pastor Joe Nathan Haywood of Valley Grove Christian Faith Center, 225 Hogan Road, Bottle, New Mexico. Come and see us one day. God bless you. Stand by and don't touch that dial. See you later. <laughs> Thank you.
This is an important announcement for anyone prescribed the blood thinner medication Xarelto. If you or a loved one has been hospitalized or died from serious internal bleeding, including bleeding of the brain or gastrointestinal system after taking Xarelto, you may be entitled to substantial compensation. Don't delay. Call the Sentinel Group right now. The blood thinner medication Xarelto has been linked to an increased risk of severe internal bleeding, hemorrhaging, stroke, heart attack, and even death. If you or a loved one experienced severe internal bleeding, or if a loved one died as a result of taking the blood thinner medication Xarelto, call the Sentinel Group now. Our network of experienced attorneys are ready to help fight for you. You won't pay a thing until your case is settled. Call the Sentinel Group now for a free case evaluation. Don't wait. If you or a loved one has been hospitalized or died after taking Xarelto, you may be entitled to substantial compensation. Call the Sentinel Group right now. Celebrate, celebrate, Fiesta Motors. Come and see us today and discover why our service is second to none. In business for over 17 years, we have the right car for you. When you buy a vehicle from Fiesta Motors, we do everything possible to ensure your satisfaction. Located at the corner of El Paseo and Main. See you there. Celebrate Fiesta Motors. We're buying a car. It's always a celebration. Since I got adopted, I've learned a lot about these humans. Uh, I know. I mean, check out these two. It's Flirt City over here. I think she's getting his number. Nice. Your humans got some sweet moves. Takes after his dog. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the second half of Serving It Up. And I am your host, Pastor Joe Nathan Hayward of Valley Grove Christian Faith Center, 225 Hogan Road. I want you to come see us out in Vado. There's still a fire burning. But we're at our second half, and I'm with none other than I am a testimony. Huh? The clothing line. The number one right here in Las Cruces. I don't know where you're living at, but I know where I'm at. All right, nothing, none other than Mr. John McGlunn. Man, blessings to you. Now, we got to meet the CEO. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, man, it's time <laughs> to pull up your pants, bruh. Let your socks show. Come on with it. Because I'm about to bring it, brother. All right. All right? All so, right. you know, now that, uh, you know, you've introduced your listeners, our listeners, to uh, who you are as a CEO, I want them to understand the spiritual and intimate side of John McGlunn. Hmm. All right, you up for that, man? Come on with it. I'm coming All with right. it. All right, number one, if you were one of the 12 disciples, mm. my God, my God, <laughs> if you were one of the 12 disciples in the book of Acts, mm. who would you be and why? Man, that's a great question. I would probably be the one closest to Jesus. Why? <laughs> because that's where I would want to be. I would want to be close enough to not miss anything at all. Wow. Yeah, I would be, you know, part of everything that he spoke about, I would actually be able to feel the breath of Jesus wow. on me because I want to be that close. Now, what do you think about the, the, the mother who said to him, you know, kind of snuck over to him, you know, some of us, we, we kind of <laughs> sneak in our spiritual, you know, oh, we, we, we get too spiritual and we sneak over and say, well, um, can, can my two sons sit on your right and left hand side? What do you think about that, that question? But, you know, for a mother, a mother is always looking out for the kids. Mm -hmm. So that's not really a bad question because they, she wanted the best for, their, for her children okay. and her sons. But, you know, if he, that, that's a choice Jesus would make. Yeah. You know, if that's who he wanted close to him, then he would have said, bring him on. If not, that's, you know, whoever he wanted close to him, he would let, and he did, let yeah, the one yeah, be close yeah. to him. I understand that. I like that. But I also, you know, it's always a yin and a, and a yang. <laughs> You know, the, the, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Absolutely. And I ask that question for a reason, because there are, there might be someone who's watching this who might have that kind of spirit, but it's the wrong spirit. Hmm. You know, and then we as leaders, I'm looking at us as leaders, okay. man. Somebody is following our mouth, and uh, somebody doesn't understand our true heart and our true purpose. And uh, it's like the old martial art who had two students, and... Uh, one wanted to learn to be the greatest, and uh, he wanted to learn for bad reasons. So the, the old master wouldn't make him the best, hmm. or he wouldn't deem him his son because he understood his heart. And I believe that that's how we are sometimes as leaders. What you, what's your take on that? 
leadership takes on a very strong point. Yes. You know, success and fame doesn't always come to the oh, most yes. talented. It comes oh, to yes. those who understand what adversity is. And when you look at individuals who have gone through things where they can actually teach yes. and lead, because leading is also learning. Yeah. And when you are a person that understands what that is, uh -huh, then uh -huh. what you talk about with individuals, they will buy into it. That's right. You know, they will actually understand why they are following because yes. a leader understands he has to be a servant first. Exactly. And then he can teach. Exactly. You know, so there are processes in, even in leadership that people must understand. And if they don't understand, then that's why individuals fall by the wayside. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So what do you think about the prophets? Now, most prophets, <laughs> <laughs> come on now, talk to me, man. Talk to me. Uh, most prophets, um, specifically the major prophets, mm -hmm. they really didn't have any institution to learn from. They were just called from out of nowhere mm -hmm. and showed up and done miraculous things. And those who are, you know, maybe kings or queens, they didn't understand them. What do you think about prophets? When you, you have... Even, even believe that they even existed? <coughs> well, they existed. They existed. And I think one of the things you look at, especially in that day and time, yeah. when God calls you, you don't necessarily have to have a building to go to. Amen. You know, you have to be able to understand what your calling and what the purpose is for yes. your calling. So, yes. you know, even when you look at today's time, not necessarily from a prophet standpoint, but you look at individuals who are called for a particular purpose. Yes. Well, they may not have a particular location to go to, but they can still affect lives. Right. And that's what we do. I like it's, that. It's about affecting lives. And, you know, we talked about this earlier. When you're giving a, given a particular task or purpose, it's for three reasons. One is to change a life, yes, to impact a I life, and add value to a life. Say that again. So when you are changing lives, yes. you're going to change a life, impact, and add value to a life. It doesn't necessarily have to be done in a building. Yes. You know, coming from, again, I grew up in the ministry. My ministry wasn't to be in the pulpit. Yes. But yes. my ministry was given as a purpose to affect lives is what it. I'm doing. I love you know, it. So uh, when we look at considering a prophet, I don't necessarily, at the, of course, in this day and time, you know, there's a different analogy for it. But I think when you look at individuals who understand the purpose and the vision they were given and they follow it, then right. they, uh, they'll do what is necessary. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Next question. All right. What would you uh, be, well, excuse me, what would be your basis for accepting <clears throat> someone um, as a spiritual leader? Man, they got to know the word. They got to know the word. Period. Uh, but okay, but you got a lot that that crafts. I mean, just like some of the peddlers. I can remember. <laughs> now watch this. I can remember when I wear, wore a uniform. Mm -hmm. I, I stood outside of Albertsons and I would see the transits go out there for every hour and on every hour come back in and put money into the bank. And they had more money in their bank account than I had in mine. Mm. And they made it a profession. And I'm saying that some of these leaders are the same way, man. They go out every hour on the hour. They come in off of the backs of folk mm. and put their hard-earned money, put their hard-earned gifts, and they trust them in these leaderships. And they're nothing as I would call punks. <laughs> Why would I call them punks? Because the dictionary says that they're nothing but what? Bamboozlers, hoodwinkers, wow. and tricksters. And there are some. And yeah. there are some. There are some, absolutely. So? Well... I have to look at it from a different standpoint. Go ahead. I grew up with one of the greatest spiritual leaders I've ever seen, and that was my father. Okay. So I understand from the inside out what to look for. And because you are connected spiritually, your spirit will connect with someone that is actually a spiritual leader. Yes. There's a difference when you are a mind leader. Yes. You know, because... I like that. Because you're, try you're actually trying to make people feel what you feel versus actually being able to talk into them with the Word of God. Yes. And they feel it. Because they're wow. connected. So wow. when we talk about a spiritual leader, you will get uncomfortable when it's not Ex right. Exactly. You know? so, that's, so comfort is a big part, but it's a spiritual comfort. Yes. It's not a physical comfort. That's right. And there's a difference. I like that, man. I like that because that, you know, that kind of, when you said that, that kind of turned on a switch light mm -hmm. inside of me. Because I, sometimes you don't know what to look for. Absolutely. And while you're looking for it, you run across this and you run across that, and then you, you're sucked into something. And then, you know, I mean, come on, I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I'm a father, I'm a husband, right. I'm somebody's cousin. I'm, you know, my, my mother may see this. How is she going to interpret what I'm saying as her son? Right. How is my father going to interpret who I am as his son? 
You know, and I think, I think on, that, on that aspect, leadership is very important. Okay? Yes, I would agree. All right. So, now, this is a thought and a statement. <laughs> okay. All right? I just want your input on it. Jesus was blessed and accepted by God because of who he was and not because of what he did. And the statement is, many leaders assume that performance is the means of acceptance by the word of God. Hmm. Well, you can perform in anything, but unless you bear fruit. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some on that. <laughs> Don't make a difference. And you can tell yeah. the tree by the what? <laughs> hey, by what, how, how, what the, the fruit bears. All right. You know, because an apple doesn't grow orange trees. That's right. That's right. So when I see the word, all right, impress, gain, applause, and approval, I'm always looking for something that's being sold off of a market. Hmm. Okay? Because I, 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 don't, I don't see him putting himself on the market like some of us put ourselves on the market. We solicit to be counted in to be a bishop or, uh, you know, a, a, the pastor of the next church. We got hmm. a, a committee that will come out and select us. I mean, what's your take on that? Again, I, I really believe in the calling. You know, I believe that an individual who is called to the location he's supposed to be at, mm -hmm. it will become a perfect fit because like there's no situation where you can go somewhere and, and be comfortable unless you are called to be there. And I believe that I've seen it. You know, I've seen individuals go into a particular church that they thought they were supposed to be at, they were not called to, and it, it becomes a disaster. I love and that it. could be in any situation. You know, when you, when you think of what you may do in life, yes. it's a fit for you. You, you are made for a purpose. I and like that, that. that word purpose says that you're called to do that. All right. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it, Mr. John McGlern. He is in the house on Serving It Up. And listen, I just want to thank you for joining us, Mr. McGlunn. I appreciate you being I'm here. I'm glad you Man, you are soon yeah. coming back on the show. We're going to top it up again. I'm looking forward but to But I'm going to leave this thought with you, ladies and gentlemen. And that thought is this. Partnership. Accountability. Mentoring. Relationship. One more time. Partnership. Accountability. Mentoring. And relationship. That's an important place to be. On all four playing fields at one time. You've got to be able to switch hats, as we would say. And I thank you for coming down here to Serving It Up, man. It was just a blessing what to a have pleasure. you here. A pleasure, man. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the time we had with Mr. John McGlunn. Blessings to you. Thank Remember you, the line, I am a testimony. Go and see up on the Amazon, I am a testimony. Look for the book, I am a testimony. <laughs> Blessings to you on Serving It Up. God bless you. Okay.